Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 4,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 110 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at Powerslam.tv. The following is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NXT Then Now Forever. I'm James Boyd, and I'm here with the first ever repeat guest. Or were you the host last time, Rich? You tell me. <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, I- I'm glad I'm here on a Friday, and uh, I'm not banned from the show, so. <laughs> what? Oh my god, I'm not even going to go in there with you. Um, all I'll say, it, it does feel weird for me to wa- be the one that's doing most of the hosting duty and being the geek behind the laptop this time around. Normally, I just call in, I spew whatever I need to spew, and you have to deal with it. Now, this is my turn to, I guess... Uh, <laughs> To do the, the tables have turned. Yeah, I guess so. The tables have turned. <laughs> um, so anyway, we're going to start with NXT from five years ago. Bailey, Bailey, I get to go- Bailey is nothing but a loser. <laughs> just like that has been Bret's heart. <laughs> Bailey, his only claim to fame is a match that he lost. <laughs> oh, but wait, wait, wait. Bailey would like an old, stringy, gray-haired <sighs> man that looks mm, homeless. <laughs> The hip man. Ugh. They're both freaks. Um, NXT 212. Uh, this is March 13th. Ninth, or, or I almost said 19. Jesus. Uh, 2014. <laughs> 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 like, I'm out of it, man. So, Paige comes down to the ring for a match. Our commentary team is Tom Phillips, Alex Riley, and quote, WWE superstar formerly known as Tensai, Jason Albert. Uh, so Unbelievable. We, yeah, I, I guess, I guess a big change, huh? So, uh, Paige versus Sasha Banks. Uh, Sasha ends up bringing Charlotte to ringside with her. Paige rolls off her new shirt to the crowd, and then Sasha snatches. So Paige and rag tolls her around. Sasha takes control with some um, cat fight slaps and a straight jag hold. Paige fights to her feet, and Sasha ba- and gets her back into a corner and delivers some back elbows. Paige hits a drop kick, slaps a, the Scorpion uh, cross lock on her for the submission. Uh, what's the name of that move back that she used to call it, pay, uh, Rich? She called it the Paige tap out. All right, PTO, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so Charlotte comes to the ring, uh, jumps Paige, and then Natalia comes out of nowhere and makes a save, and the heels uh, scatter. Um, Charlotte saving Sasha ain't that cute. Oh, <laughs> bro. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, this episode is kind of a blast for the past. And you think of like, wow, like Sasha and Bailey are best friends, and then we're gonna get to it. And you're just like, okay, oh, that was off screen, you know. That's when the, you know, that's how you know, all oh, this whole thing is a shoot, or the whole thing is a work. I mean, um, yeah. This was not the boss, Sasha Banks, in this match. Uh, she didn't have the hair yet, but she kind of had the jacket deal in. She was almost, she, not quite. Like, we we're like two weeks in, so we should have the brown hair instead of like the fuchsia or purple hair. But like, it's 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 close. Like, she has the Kanye West graduation glasses, but it's close. So then we get a recap of all the happenings between Corey Graves and Yoshi Tasu whooping that ass in Sami Zayn last week, uh, beating up Graves. Uh, then we get a backstage interview with Sami. Sami says he has no issue with Graves until he called him out and says he beat Graves last week. So as far as he's concerned, it's over unless Graves wants to keep running his fuck box. Um, we get a commercial for WrestleMania 30. Corey uh, Graves being up. a sucker. I, I could never imagine that. Oh, who could have foreseen such a thing? <laughs> we then get a recap of Mojo Raleigh squashing CJ at Parker at 
arrival two weeks ago. Then we get a backstage locker room interview with Mojo saying that we showed the world that we are just getting started because we just don't get hyped. We stay hyped. Nah, bro. This is not the C Nation. This is not. This is not what is that? It's not happening over here. No. That, that man was trying to channel the energy. Yeah, he was trying to become like we are the yes movement. Like this Mojo movement, mm, not too sure. So Mo- Mojo movement still waiting to take off. Yeah, five years later. Yeah, mission has been canceled. <laughs> so uh, the Ascension versus <laughs> two jobbers. Name one's name is Travis Tyler, and the other name is Cal Bishop. Uh, Cal Bishop. This guy was on Breaking Ground and got released in Breaking Ground. Oh, interesting. I believe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He came out in the singlet and it said Cal Bishop on the back. I was like, you will never be a star. So, <laughs> <laughs> you won't be around this year. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Victor and Connor take turns beating the piss out of poor Travis Tyler. And it was some shoulder tackles and back body drops and chops. Commentary is already making the Road Warrior comparisons. They already doomed to fail, Rich. Damn. Yeah. Uh, Tom Phillips. Uh, lets us know that Kevin Nash was quoted as once saying that the Ascension are the total package. What? <laughs> Look, man, I I don't believe that. And you know why I don't believe that? Because Kevin Nash has had an eye for talent his entire career. Look who he surrounded himself with. <laughs> you, know, you know, sometimes look, you can't get them all look, right. They, they, you can't look, get them all right. They, they took that man out of context, and I refuse to believe anything different. Maybe, maybe, or they just lied. Who knows? <laughs> so, <laughs> so then, uh, so then Connor makes a tag, and then uh, Irish Wisp poured Travis Tyler into into the Ascension's corner as Victor comes off the second turnbuckle with a V trigger. Victor then charges and knocks Cal Bishop, uh, that geek, off the apron down to the floor, and then the Ascension hit their high, their charging high low finish for the win. I, uh, in my notes, I will squashed, squish, squozen. <laughs> so, <laughs> damn, squozen. Speaking of squash, squish, and squozen, uh, Mason Ryan versus Wesley Blake is the very next match. Mason Ryan, nice guy. Met him at a couple indie shows. I think I went to an NXT show back then that had like Rusev there. Just around that time, I was Rusev with there. you. Yep. Yeah, well, I was with you because you were going to NXT shows. I, this is my first time I ever went to an NXT show. This is back when he was out here working uh, with some shit that like the power plant, like a warehouse in Tampa. So <laughs> Yeah, the old warehouse. Yeah, yeah. So Mason Ryan was on his card. It had the Ascension. It had, like, um, Summer Ray. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so as Mason Ryan's making his way down to the ring, Renee gets added as a fourth person to the commentary team because they, they just have to, you know, they just have to test the waters with commentary. The more people, the merrier, I guess. Um, so they start some train, some chain wrestling until they exchange some strikes. Manson Ryan gets, uh, the better of both exchanges until, until he charges Blake in the corner. And then he ends up eating the post with his shoulder. Blake then works over, sh- uh, Ryan's shoulder until Ryan fires back with some punches, a big boot, and then hits a Cobra clutch drop, I guess, for the win. Trying to work something out. Uh, let's see Wesley Blake five years ago was out here. Uh, and five five years later, you know that, that man, man, uh, you Tags. know, a forgotten son, literally forgotten. Yeah. Like, you know how Cody was telling the Bucks singles. Yes, Wesley Blake tags. <laughs> 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 so. Bro, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a portion after Blake and Murphy split where he's going to start showing up on these NAC shows wearing, like, tassels on his boots. He's going to, like, I remember I gave him a, a name around that time. I used to call that man the regular warrior, uh, <laughs> Wesley Blake. <laughs> oh, my God. So, <laughs> the regular warrior. That's like, yes. remember when Joe Bunny used to call himself Joe Regular? Yes. It's like, bro, why would you just say you're average? Like, that's not... You know, regular Joe. Yeah, that's yeah, that, yeah. I, not a star. Anyway, um, we get a Bailey interview. Uh, super excited. Bailey just puts over the WWE network and how she's friends with Natalia and how Natalia introduced her to Brett. So she, Bailey's now watching Brett's old matches. So then Sasha and Charlotte walk up. Sasha calls Bailey a loser, just like that has been Bret Hart. 
Charlotte uh, says to Bailey that Brett's only claim to fame is a match that he lost. Charlotte then says that Bailey would like an old, stringy, gray-haired man that looks like a bum homeless. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> Never forget. Triple H is NXT's booker. So Correct. S- Sasha says they're both freaks, uh, Brett and Bailey. Uh, then then Bailey just expresses that Summer Rae isn't hanging out with Sasha and Charlotte anymore because they're both ugly and that she beat Sasha in a match. I can't do justice to what the fuck that was that Bailey did, but it was not endearing. It was not, mm-mm, it was bad. It was the kind of cringe that like killed her off on the main roster. Um, see, see. So the, the so the, so the magic has not begun yet. No, no, no. It doesn't really start working, and she starts having matches and then losing and getting bullied by the girls uh, in a better fashion. Like her res- her responses are like very bad, but the way that she, to me anyway, when I was watching it um, in short doses back then, was that Bailey would eventually snap in matches to kind of show her to kind of stand up to her bullies as opposed to lame comebacks that come off cringy as fuck. But gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cause this was bad. Uh, Bailey out there like a real Mark. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that might be insult to Mark. Like let's put it this way. I don't think even Izzy ass like this backstage. Um, so, <laughs> so, so all of a sudden Sasha threatens Bailey until Natty walks up and asks is their problem Charlotte says oh look it's Natty a divas champion from a hundred years ago <laughs> uh, Charlotte, damn yeah Charlotte says that she, the only thing she's famous for now is drunk downing her boss at a reality show or on a reality show um, I'm assuming that's something for Total Bruh. Divas I'm I yes, no it, it was something from Total Divas is hilarious. Like she had called up Stephanie while she was drunk one time, uh-huh. and then she had to go talk to her after. Is hilarious. What was said? Do you remember? Uh, was it I bad? don't remember. Was it? A I, fire I watched that show like five. Yes. Oh no! It was like, look, if this was if this wasn't Natty, like they'd have, like they like something would have happened to her. But, like she would either got buried or she would have got like mm-hmm. like hold on, why are you calling? Uh, you know, Stephanie in the middle of the night. Right. Do, talking okay, like think, this. Like, you're obviously drunk. Okay, do you think it was legit, or do you think it was reality show nah. storyline bullshit? <clears throat> I think it was reality show storyline bullshit. Okay, alright, we good then. Let's see. Um, because, uh, Natty don't seem like no damn fool, so <laughs> that's why I'm kind of confused. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> So then Natty says, it's funny, but she remembers a funny story from the last time she saw Charlotte, which was when Brett got inducted to the Hall of Fame and recounted the time her uncle beat Charlotte's daddy for the WWF title. <laughs> so so then uh, Natty and Charlotte go Made face to face. Made him quit. Yeah. So then Natty and Charlotte go face to face, and then uh, Charlotte and uh, Sasha back off. We then get a WCW greatest... Uh, pay-per-view matches volume one dvd commercial then we get to xavier woods versus alexander rusev so boy boy woods comes out first then out comes tyler breeze he comes to the ring and he asks woods to leave so that he can get his revenge over the ass being that him and woods both got an nxt arrival then out comes rusev while Rusev's coming out and walking towards the ring, Breeze jumps and stomps out Woods from behind and then rolls out the ring. Rusev poses for a while as the ref asks Woods if he can compete. This dummy says, yeah, I can compete. So the match starts. Rusev kicks him around at different corners of the ring. Rusev uh, drops bowls on him. We drop bowls on him. <laughs> so, then, <laughs> so, then, so then Woods starts checking some of uh, Rusev's kicks and fires backs with some kicks and chops until Rusev... Hits a pop up some more and drop some like freak accident looking slam and then uh slaps on the accolade for the submission victory. All this tells me is that um Rusev has been whooping Xavier Woods ass for years and yes. ain't never gonna stop. Half a decade, literally. So uh then we get the strangest thing I think I've ever seen. Sheamus made his debut on the main roster in what, two thousand nine? Yeah. Okay, so we get a Sheamus plug for him appearing on NXT next week. What? I 
do you remember this? Uh, I think I think this is when they were still trying to like uh, fill these buildings because they would do this like periodically all summer in 2014. This is how we ended up with Tyson Kidd there. I remember Batista like was advertised for a lot of dark segments. Uh, Titus O'Neil showed up for a couple weeks in NXT. So they, this is something they would do uh, regularly back then. R- right, but the profile of like Sheamus and Natalia and um and Cesaro 14. are a lot different than Sheamus, who by that point in time was already, uh, uh, you know, one of the more decorated people on the roster, on the main roster. That's kind of weird to me. Um, uh, oh, well. So we go backstage for what was supposed to be a Neville interview until Bo Dallas immediately interrupts and says that his fans are sick of Neville and his flips. And then Bo says in two weeks he's taking back his title and says that Neville's out of his league. So Neville immediately, immediately just slaps his geek in the face for the disrespect, and then they go face-to-face. So, Colin Cassidy versus Bo Dallas. Out comes big Colin Cassidy, gold chain on, in great shape, abs and obliques, a a full 10 on a Bret Hart 1 to 10 scale, looking like the wettest human to ever exist. Damn. Even then, Cass was spelling the word soft wrong to try to get over. Uh, So, Cass is just overpowering Bo, so he tries to stick and move. Nothing doing. Big Cass catches him and drops some elbows. Uh, Bo rolls out the ring, regroups, and takes control with the side headlock. Bo works over Cass with all of the boring controlling offense you've seen in, a, in any babyface Kevin Nash Diesel main event. I can practically hear Vince McMahon on commentary saying that Bo is keeping the giant off his feet. Uh, <laughs> the crowd then chants boring. We get a double down after Cass uh, reverses the bull whip into the corner. Uh, they both get to their feet. Cass uh, ch- fires up with some punches. Uh, Harley race, Triple H high knee. Um, and then a big overhand club for a two count. Then we get a big cast, big boot. The only move he's ever done worth a damn for two. Then Bo crawls underneath the ropes to do this ultra lame looking spot where Bo snaps the middle rope into Cass's face like a pulled rubber band is released. Then Bo boosts Cass in the face and it hits a double underhook DDT for the win. Bo stands and smiles in victory as the show closes fading to black. Yeah, man, I, I wouldn't recommend that match with nobody. I right? wouldn't recommend the show to anybody. <laughs> this was not a good show. This is two weeks after Revival. Like, you watch this and you're like, okay. Is this, this the same is, promotion? Like, this is definitely developmental. This is not the third brand yet. <laughs> watching this show. Like, nah. This, this one it. Whole bunch of squash matches, short matches. None of them were good. Uh, it, it, I mean, I, I don't know. I imagine five years ago, you see this Colin Cassie thing. You're like, if he can get better, he could be a star. He didn't. Ne- he never got better though. <laughs> he 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 remained tall. Like he, that yeah. man had a set. That man had a had a set of skills in 2014, and four years later, he still had that same sk- set of skills. <laughs> you know, like, a li- lot more tan back then, or uh, more recently. Yeah, a lot more orange. I wonder if this is during the time that Enzo had the broke leg and he was off TV. Maybe. I don't know. Um, they didn't have that, uh, the, their classic, I guess, classic music uh, when they do the whole, my name is Enzo Amore, and, you know, and this this is Big Cass. He's six foot nine. Like, they didn't have, <laughs> they didn't have none of that yet, at least. And that's also weird because there are a few of those like that where, like, Sami Zayn still doesn't have his music yet. Um, it just ain't right. Yeah, it just feels wrong. So, I wonder when that turns around. Like, uh, it's got to be sometime soon. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, we'll be right back with this week's episode of NXT. Stop, 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 Riddle. The, the, the fact that you actually think you're deserving of an NXT North American Championship match shows how clueless you really are. Because the fact is, sooner rather than later, the NXT North American title will be wrapped around the waist of Adam Cole. And that's undisputed. And that's undisputed. Sure is. I'll tell you what's undisputed. You talk a tough game. And honestly, you're good, bro. I know. But if you want to continue this little powwow, why don't we meet in the ring? Welcome back. This time we're going to go over, uh, do you remember the number by any chance? It's like 450-something? Four-something. Uh, yeah, the I date remember. is is March 4th, March, the March 13th March episode 13th. Yep. of NXT. Yeah, 
Um, anyway, NXT March thirteenth, two thousand nineteen. We get the semifinals of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Uh, first match start off is the Forgotten Sons versus Mustache Mountain. So the War Raiders, they they kept showing them before this in these video packages, mm-hmm. like. They kept walking out there like they were waiting for whoever wins at three o'clock after school. <laughs> I mean, how else do you expect them to behave? Like you're supposed to be Vikings that are scared. True. True. I mean, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with them. They say we're ready. Y'all ready war for ready. war. Yeah. War ready. <laughs> so, uh, they start by working over uh, bait early until uh until uh, Trent tags in seven was clean the house and then uh, Cutler took over or took out his leg with a with a chop block and then they start doing one of the best things they always do in any of these mustache mountain matches which is we shine up Tyler and then Trent comes in and sells his ass off <laughs> yes <laughs> like, like bro, bro as soon as that chop block happened I was like fuck I was like I was yeah. like this man seven can't defend that knee just once <laughs> damn <laughs> yeah and he didn't even have the knee brace on this time. So in theory, he's supposed to be healed up. Nah. Yeah, that never. Knee, look, that knee, will we be talking about Trent Seven's knee in like two years the same way we talk about Seth Rollins' knee <laughs> right maybe, now? Maybe, maybe. I'll say this, though, about Trent Seven. Like, his chops, they would get Walter's respect, I feel like. Hmm. You might have a point. Like, his, his chops do look nice. And the, the thing that's always funny is, he comes in and gets a little quick hot tag, and yep. like he he runs halfway wild, and then immediately gets cut off, cut off, and then like has to start selling his ass off. That's like seems to be his mo. Yep. So they keep targeting on the leg, and they keep punishing him. They put on a <laughs> Blake ends up putting on a spinning toe hold, and then seven counters with a small package for a two count. Blake then applied a figure four leg lock. And then uh, Trent reversed the hold, and then uh, Blake ended up going to get the ropes over his side of the ring, uh, or his team side of the ring. Uh, Cutler tried to tag in and maintain the advantage, but uh, he and Seven clotheslined each other for a double down. So Trent finally makes the tag. Bate runs wild, and in the midst of running wild, Bate ends up picking up both sons of anarchy. And <laughs> 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 ends up airplane spinning both of them. Bait stupid strong like that big strong boy shit is yeah. a shoot. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it, it, I'm telling you, bro. Like bait. He, that man's a superstar. Promo, yeah, his promo game isn't where it should be, but he's still young. But like in time, like he could be great, or he already is great. But like he could be like special great. Like bring his ass over here. He could be the next short wonder. <laughs> yeah, that man's only 21 years old, James. Imagine yeah. if he was 26. <laughs> Like the IWGP champion. <laughs> so petty. So <laughs> So then uh Bate then uh hits a double Frankensteiner and then and then he ended up missing a shooting star press out on the floor. He didn't recover it and then delivered a neck breaker. Bate then leapt off the top rope for a corkscrew senton. Uh Mustache Mountain delivered a combination Lariat uh, Dragon Suplex. Uh, Riker then interfered That's to break up the pin because, of course, he had that 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 card to play. For some reason, in that match, he had no shirt on, no jacket on, out there just looking just ripped. Yep. Like he will not be forgotten <laughs> when he, <laughs> once he takes the shirt off. Uh, so, no, no, that that man came out there with the gimmick on and then took it off, but he wasn't even wrestling. You know, I didn't even notice that. Like, I just, you know, I want to pay attention to interest in the fucking. You know, oh, I'll tell you this. Look, Forgotten look, Sons. look. I'll, so, I'll tell you this. During the Forgotten Sons entrance, all the energy left the building because, and it was so quiet in oh, there yeah. that, you, that you could hear Blake yelling over the music and understand everything he said. Oh yeah, he's definitely. They definitely got that that Corbin heat. They definitely yeah. got that that um that Lashley heat right now. They come out, <laughs> no one gives a flying fuck. So, um, yeah. They came out, so I'm not paying attention to their interest. All of a sudden, they're in a match. They keep cutting her to to Riker, and I'm like, wait a second, where's his shirt? Where's it? You really can't have no shirt on, but apparently he just took it off. Just so every, he, you every know, time that you cut to feeling. that man, yeah, every time you cut to that man, he got less clothes on. Like, like what kind of what kind of fucking uh, uh, you know, what type of shit y'all running? What kind of establishment is this? And you know that man on talk. Maybe, maybe he is the NXT 
EC3 now. You're coming for that man. <laughs> so, anyway, back to this match. Uh, <laughs> I forgot it was a match. So, like we said, Riker broke up the pin. That led to Tyler Bate hitting a uh, suicide dive on onto him. Uh, mustache Mountain then went for the finisher, but it was all it all just got broke up. Riker interfered again. The clothesline bait uh, on the floor. And then the sons of, I keep calling them, I call them the sons of anarchy. <laughs> and then the sun set up uh, bait for their, that, for that foot stomp, even flow DDT, DDT thing for, yeah. the, uh, for the win. So we have the sons of anarchy that are forgotten, that are, that are going to be in the finals of the Dusty Rhodes classic. Yeah. Seems like the building was shocked. Um, when Will you be? Yes, I, I remember um, when I, and these spoilers had had came across. Uh, I had found out that Forgotten Sons were going to win, and I was like, "Why would you do this?" But I, I, I guess they want to, you know, to, like this is a obviously we just talked about Wesley Blake being in NXT five years ago. Like they want to, you know, try something with them, but and ultimately it doesn't hurt really hurt Mustache Mountain. This is not really their territory. They're still like UK guys, so. I mean, I would have liked the 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 um, Mustache Mountain, uh, Alistair Black, uh, Ricochet final, but who would you know? Yeah, like my thing Triple is H, this, right? They, <laughs> <laughs> my thing is this: they are former NXT champions. Why in the fuck? <laughs> why in the fuck would you beat them? Like whatever. And why would you pin bait? That's another one. Like that's. You know, they've been doing all sorts of that, like, on it, here and also on the main roster. Where they're out here, Tamina and Nia, pin Nia. Like, you know, Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan, pin Daniel Bryan. Like, they've been doing a bunch of that foolishness. So, yeah. um, Kathy Kelly, well, I mean, they keep they keep this up. Um, and I guess that means that Ghetto just going to have to win Book of the Year again, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> so, like, like seven out of the eight, uh, last eight years. Right. So... Didn't NXT, didn't uh, Triple H and Ryan Ward win at one time, like, in the last, like, two, three years? Yeah, 2016. Ah, okay. I actually looked that up today for my okay. uh, Factoids deal. That's right. Okay, so, Kathy Kelly was interviewing Matt Riddle, and then Woo! Adam Cole walked up. <laughs> this boy, Matt Riddle, looked higher than racial tension. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a permanent thing, but, Yeah. Racial tension or yeah. riddle? Both. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so Cole comes out and says uh, he wanted to talk about himself winning the North American Championship, and the riddle suggested they should uh, continue what they uh, continue that discussion in the ring one day. Riddle, I don't know. Like Adam Cole, I just don't buy it because he always loses. You know. Mm-hmm. Like he's yeah. good, he's very, very good, but like I just don't buy it when you keep getting your ass beat through all this tough talk. Like maybe if you didn't talk so much shit, you wouldn't get your ass whooped so badly all the time. Maybe you wouldn't lose so much. Just I don't turn, know. Just just turn down just a little bit, and yeah. maybe your opponent won't be as angry. Bitch, be humble. So, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, Io Shirai versus Bianca Belair, number one contender match. Uh, uh- I still love Io Shirai's music just because it's so fun. And then when she shows up in the mask, it's like, I don't understand how this relates to this at all, but this is just great. I mean, the mask does look demonic, like straight up. And the mask is pretty much almost exactly like the Queen Quest mask that she was wearing um, in Stardom. So, like, ain't much changed on the gimmick except for, like, the logo on the front says NXT now. Look, and the music all happy, like, it's, it's funny, like. Yeah. I mean. Their music in their Queen's Quest music isn't necessarily sad, but I always actually describe it kind of happy ish. Mm -hmm. Even though they were heels, but whatever. Anyway, we get Shayna Baszler on commentary. Bianca ends up hitting a, uh, or getting a full Nelson EO escapes, hit some high spots. Um, Shirai ends up sending Belair outside with a drop kick. Then on the floor, Shirai ends up uh, trying to follow up, but uh, Bianca ends up catching her and then dropping her right on the <clears throat> on the ring steps. Like I think she was going for like the Rey Mysterio, like the, they were trying to put over like the Rey Mysterio, like her around off, you know, over the top ropes or whatever. But she right. catches her because she's strong as shit, and then just like basically like has her in the front rack position and throws her over, and she ends up landing on the uh, still steps. Shirai does. Belair rolls her into the ring, gets a two count, and then she ends up taunting Io. Uh, 
Bianca ends up briefly getting the heat on EO and then hits a standing moonsault for another two count. Oh, EO, good. Yes. EO then uh, began a comeback with some with uh, with a double stomp. She then set up for the 619. And then she ends up hitting a springboard drop kick that was followed by some running knees in the corner, the double knees. Shirai ends up climbing the turnbuckle and then uh, Bianca cuts her off. So she ends up catching um, EO in the tree of woe and then Belair just whips her across the stomach with her hair. Bianca then tries uh, climbing the turnbuckles, but Shirai ends up uh, cutting her off. And then we end up getting a super Frankensteiner by EO. She ends up going for a try for another um, high risk move, but uh, she ends up going for the moonsault, her her finish. And then, but Bianca gets knees up. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Shayna, who's been on commentary talking about, it doesn't matter who I'm facing because EO's a nobody in Japan. And Bianca, she I beat her already, even though it was one of those... I win through garbage means because I have goons now, or goonettes. So, she ends up running out to the ring. She ends up tossing out EO, slapping her choke on Bianca, and then... Kyrie. If I remember correctly. Yeah, Kyrie comes out. She ends up uh, clearing out... She ends up clearing out Shayna. Shayna, she turns her back on Shayna because she, apparently she's unfamiliar with her work. She's unfamiliar with her resume. <laughs> she ends up getting choked out as well. She leaves all three to Aang, and then... She leaves, and then Shayna leaves off to the back. This match was really good. Um, EO finally looks, like, really comfortable, like, in her surroundings. Like, she's using every inch of the ring, like, to get all around in a way that she didn't look as comfortable in the Mae Young Classic. And Bianca's, like, so fast and explosive. It's like, how is she not in the main roster yet? Who knows? No, no good reason. I mean, geez, look at who they're pushing on the main roster. With, like, you have Mandy... And you have Sony out here doing them stupid fucking spots with the apron skirts. Um, you have Lacey Evans doing absolutely fucking nothing. You look at Naya, Naya and Tamina out here fucking up things left and right. Regressing. Yeah. I, like, it was so funny because after that brand split, they were doing squash matches with Naya and Braun. And at the beginning... Nia was more impressive in her squash matches than Braun. And then we get to, you know, the end of that year, beginning of the next year in 2017, and then they, they put Braun into that, you know, monster versus underdog thing with Sami Zayn, and the rest is fucking history. And then, like she, Unfortunately, she couldn't wrestle Sami Zayn, too. Yeah, yeah. Or Roman <laughs> Reigns. She's, she's out here wrestling Dana Brooke and shit. And yeah. whoever else. Yeah, so... She so we go to a commercial break and come back and we go back state or go outside of the full cell arena and I forgot I think it's Kathy Kelly yeah it's Kathy Kelly and she she informs Shayna that it will be now because of her fuck shit it will now be a four way for the NXT her woman, NXT woman's title and she asks for a response and her response is and then leaves <laughs> yes why don't any of these champions ever learn what it is anytime oh, especially there's a number- Yes, like, just dumb, dumb, dumb. Like, it, it, as dumb as it is for the babyface to turn their back on Shayna Baszler, it's equally as dumb for Shayna uh, to interrupt the match. But the thing for me is, I'm okay with it because, ultimately, the heels are supposed to be foiled. So, if they're dumb, that means they're easier to foil. So, that's supposed to be, you know... Yeah. It's okay for a heel to be dumb because, fuck them, they're bad guys. But... Mm-hmm. When you have the baby face, when you know the shit that happens to defend Balor on uh, Monday, where he's like, "Oh, distraction finish! Someone's ringing the bell. I can't possibly <laughs> focus anymore because someone's <laughs> ringing the <this> motherfucking bell. <laughs> Noise distracts me. I'm a, yeah. I'm a goddamn dog. So, like, it's like, dude, why can I ever root for you? You're a moron. Yeah, total moron. Uh, yeah, don't cancel all dumb baby faces for for the uh, 2019. Forever yeah. until the end of time, please. Yeah, like I'm not saying that babyface should never be outsmarted, but if they're outsmarted, it should be because a heel is a is a scout or a tactician or or just was smarter than a smart person would be. Like, it's okay to be a smart heel and get to get you know get over on a babyface one time or a couple times, but like, WWE eventually they gotta figure them out. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so watch when we get a. Uh, Josh or Jeremy talking about like, well, well, what about this the this talented scout that uh, finishes and reverses all these moves in Jay White? And I'm gonna tell them to fuck themselves. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm waiting for it. I can hear it now. 
So we get Ricochet and Alistair Black versus DIY. I'm sorry. Blackashay versus DIY in the semifinal for the main event. Black and Chompa starting to match. There was action packed and fast paced. Um, Ricochet tagged in only to get wiped out with a kick. Gargano tagged in for a series of high spots with Ricochet. Um, Black soon joined and, and he and Ricochet cleared the ring. They then launched to their double pose routine where, every, where everyone thinks they're about to do some dives and everybody hits Kay Bradas or bounce off the ropes like they're Sin Cara. So, the original Sin Cara. Uh, so then, uh, Champa caused a distraction that allowed Gargano to connect uh, with a slingshot spear on Ricochet, which looked like a fuck up. It looked almost like it was supposed to be, a, there was a miscommunication where Ricochet thought he was supposed to like catch him and, and DDT him and it might have been a roll up situation, but like right. the ref missed it. And then you see Johnny like act pissed. Um, oh, uh, the fuck? Yeah, I don't know what that was. But we'll just go with the fact, we'll just go with it was a DDT because they treated it like it was a, I'm sorry, like treated like it was a spear, then we'll move on from there. So they end up getting the heat on Ricochet. Gargano hits a net breaker for two count. DIY then begins to work over Ricochet some more. Ciampa uh, taunted Rick, uh, Alistair by mocking the cross leg pose. Ricochet eventually cuts off DIY with a net breaker and then a uh, DDT combination where he does that thing where he throws somebody's uh, head into another person's arm and then it comes a net breaker. Uh, then he tags in Black um, and then Black goes nuts with with a bunch of strikes and everything and then Black ends up executing an Asai Moonsault on the floor. Uh, Gargano attempted a slingshot spear but this time you already know what it is. You finna catch that knee of justice. So, <laughs> so then Black delivers a brain buster to cover Gargano and uh, Gargano breaks, I'm sorry, but Ciampa breaks up the pin. Then a melee, then soon erupted, breaks into a four-way. Uh, everybody got involved with a series of rapid high spots. Uh, Black was on the turnbuckles when uh, Ciampa cut him off to deliver uh, that, uh, was it Tower of London onto the apron. Gargano then used the uh, slingshot DDT for a near fall. Black found himself trapped in the Gargano escape uh, off, of, off of a Lucha uh, deal. So then um, Ricochet then went to make a save, but then... Uh, Ciampa slaps on a submission move on him, which kind of reminded me of the finish to NXT TakeOver when they won the belts. I'm sorry, uh, Toronto when they won the belts. Yeah, they had him locked. Like, his arms were straight up in the air. Yeah. It looked like, or at least one of them was. So then, I believe, uh, Black picks up, I can't remember who it was. Who did, uh, he slapped the DD? Yeah, hey, Rick, Ricochet, Ricochet yeah, got Ricochet. free, yeah. Yeah, Ricochet ends up picking up, uh, Ciampa and then uh, throwing him into... Uh, Gargano, and he, he kind of falls on Gargano's knee. Gargano grabs his knee and then um, sells it as he actually likes a mistake, and he blew his knee out. So he sells it. He grimaces in pain, and then uh, he ends up crawling out and then for the tag out. Ciampa uh, rolls outside to check on Johnny. Um, Ciampa got back in the ring and then um, to start fighting, and then that led to a double down. Um, he needed to tag out, but there's no way in his corner because Johnny's still laid out. So he is John, John left that man out to dry, but he's hurt right now. He's hurt. So meanwhile, um, he sees that he's still screwed. So he makes a last ditch effort. So he makes a charge towards, uh, uh, black who just came in and he ends up missing. So he ends up catching the spinning back roundhouse of justice <laughs> for the win. Uh, Alistair and, um, Rick Shea move on to the finals. So then, um, good match. I probably go like four or four and a quarter. Yep, that's exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking four or four and a quarter. So from there, we get Champa. He rolls out the ring. He checks on Johnny. And the thing that I love so much about this was he grabs the belt and he gets on the apron and sits on the apron. And then Candace walks out and, and attends to Johnny, who's sitting right by that apron. Then he puts the belt down, and it's almost it made me think of. When Kenny, after he won the title, because he had just recently got back, like in good graces with the Young Bucks, like he went to hug his friends because his friends matter more than the belt. So before he actually went and touched the belt for the first time, so Champa puts the belt down on the apron, and then he helps Johnny to the back, and he walks up to the apron. This honorable yeah. feller, right? And I'm thinking, like, wow, they're really, you know, they're really. They're really f for real now. They're actually friends for real. 
And they so, also came out, you forgot to mention, they came out in their DIY gear, the DIY right. music. Yes. The the blue t-shirt they used to wear. Yes. I it looked like it was 2016. Sale. I wanted them things back on sale. Um, so... Look, I, I believe when you gonna wear something that says "chomp" on it <laughs> when, when um uh pigs fly. <laughs> look, Might as well get you look, a chomper shirt. That's look, what I'm gonna man. do. Black I mean, heart. Look, <laughs> do, you know how, do you know how badly I feel because like that chomper shirt is raw, I, but I can't do it. I can't. I can't. So, but anyway, like, look, man, I, I'd gladly go back to 2016 to pick up a DIY shirt. Look, we can't forget what we was, Rich. We can't forget what we was. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then they're animals now. Oh my god! So then we uh we get to the apron, and he takes a fall again, and and his knee buckles, and he goes to the ground. Johnny, so we Johnny think Mil- that, Johnny we, milking this shit, bro. Yeah, so we think that they're really, you know, they're really, really good now. So then Champa helps him again, and then he decides that he's going to do what he's done at the first Chicago takeover. Um, do what he did at the end of Fi- Take Over Philadelphia, where he just beats the hell out of him up on the ramp. So he goes to try to he goes to try to give him that Hogan throw, that Hogan elimination Royal Rumble throw. Yep, into flick the, it a wrist into the yep yeah, into the LED boards. But all of a sudden, Johnny he plants that bad leg down and stamps, and all of a sudden it put the brakes on. All of a sudden, Chopper looks back. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then Johnny proceeds to beat that ass from pillar to post. This man, Johnny Gargano, is, is dishonest. This man, this man led his partner on to fake the injury. What a coward. Look, look. Right? <laughs> Champa, think about it like this. This After- man, Champa, fought honorably without his tag team partner at the, at the finish of the match. This one I'm gonna go. This one I'm gonna say to you. After Takeover War Games two, he was trying to finish his feud with Alistair by doing that cage match. What does uh What does this dude do? He knows that after this, Johnny's gonna come back to him. So what does he do? He decides I'm gonna help him win his match so he can win his feud against Alistair Black. Then what does he do? He gaslights him by saying, Nah, nah, nah. You're right. You're right, Johnny. It is all about wins and championships. So I'm the NXT champion. I suggest this. You know, uh, there's no challenger for Ricochet's North American title. So how about? <laughs> so I say Johnny for NXT North American Championship. So he goes out there and he what's a Johnny do? He goes and he wins that that belt. So what? Did, so a week later. Velveteen gets a shot at the, at the uh, North American title. What does uh, Ch- Ciampa want to do? He wants to come out ringside to make sure that Johnny stays NXT North American champion so he can't come out after Goldie. So he doesn't come out, he loses. So what does he suggest next? Let's, A, hey, tags. <laughs> Rich, <laughs> tags. Me, tags. And he said, yep, you know what? I had a taste of that gold. Yes, that's that's what I want. So he thought that if I could just scratch and claw and fight and fight and fight, I'd rather have Johnny be next to me than than against me. It was kind of similar to what the, the some of the evil doing that uh, people thought that like Dwayne Wade was doing with LeBron. He's like, look, we become a team, a super team, and no matter what happens at the end of the day, I always have one more ring than you. Yep. That's that's what people thought. It's what people thought how, how good friends they were. But Johnny, he did say after they first got back together to, to Candace. And Candice was fully pissed that I have a plan. And the plan was, all right, he think he gaslighted me, but really, I'm gaslighting him, and I'm going <laughs> to whoop his monkey ass, and I'm going to come get his title. And, no, and unfortunately, was funny. I, 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 that I, I, I enjoyed over. this. Yes, I, yes, it was, it was some, it was some smart baby facing, right? So, but, yeah. you know, um... Candace look. actually looked like she was happy with Johnny. Like the plan worked. For that once. man, look, that man might have have a, uh, a easy night at home yeah. rather rather than rather than be uh, out there, you know, dealing with silence. You know. Yeah, man. I guarantee you, Johnny was coming home, and that ass was tight enough to squeeze a coal in a diamond. <laughs> he was just nervous. He's like, man, I don't know if she's gonna leave me. I'm out here doing crazy shit. Like, I, I, look, if I was her, I'd leave me too. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. We can put the kayfabe divorce lawyer on hold. We'll see. Yeah. I, I I think that she still needs to keep that keep 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 it on retainer just in case he yeah. will act, pull up on some fuck shit again. But you know, this would have been a great angle to have kickstarted them going into um, WrestleMania weekend. But unfortunately, you know what it is like. Tommaso just ended up on the um, operating table last week, and that's not going to happen. I'm I'm not spoiled on this show. I'm going to um, continue to stay unspoiled on this show so that we can give you weekly coverage with a fresh take on it. You know, as if you know these yeah. are shot ahead of time. So I don't know. I, I I heard what they may be doing, but I I don't know the specifics. But um, you know, we'll see next in the next few weeks because we're only what three more shows away. They'll figure it out. Yeah. Like, um, then it's unfortunate like that this kind of like turned into the payoff, but I mean, <sighs> what can you do? Like, uh, Chamba's a guy that has like a lot of miles on him. Uh, you know, a lot of years on the independent scene, a lot of years, you know, taking bumps in NXT. Uh, they had cut back his work, uh, his schedule a lot recently. Um, I just hope he comes back uh, strong because you never know how necks are. So yeah, like they were clearly, clearly, New York was supposed to be the end of the finish line. It just, it just couldn't hold on any longer. But yeah, man, um, that's the end of the show. Uh, Rich plugs. Yeah, man. Uh, make sure you guys uh, check us out. James and I over on One Nation Radio on Sundays. Uh, make sure you guys check us out on One Nation Radio on Tuesdays on the Lords of Pain uh, podcast network. Uh, make sure you check out the Patreon page, patreon.com slash One Nation Radio. If you'd like to support the show, I actually put up a show uh, reacting to the Observer Awards. Uh, today it's about 40 minutes long. You can get in for a buck on that. If, if you're not satisfied with it, take your buck back. But, um, what else we got? We got um pro wrestling no, tees. No, no. Hold on, I'm hold on. I'm hopping right now. <coughs> you said if, if you're not satisfied, take a butt back. If you're not satisfied, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so pro wrestling dot com slash social suplex. Uh you can pick up all the shirts from uh the Ricky and Clive wrestling show. You can pick up your keeping it strong styles, of course your one nation radio shirts, the network shirts, uh, and all the other shows here on the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Let me see if I can remember these all off the top of my head because we have plenty. So Sundays, One Nation Radio. Mondays until uh, April 1st, we got the Omega Loot Wrestling Podcast. Tuesdays, we got Jeremy and Josh keeping it strong style. Wednesdays, we got the Ricky and Clive Wrestling Show. And every other Wednesday, grown men watch this shit. Uh, we got Omega Luke again on Thursdays, I believe. Two Fridays, James with NXT, then now forever, and Saturday, all things elite, hosted by Floyd Johnson. I did it, Mama. I did it. You know what? I really appreciate you because I was gonna let you go off the phone call, similar to Jeremy last week, and then I was gonna just come back and do this, but you go ahead and handle all that for me. So, yeah, I, guess, I guess that means you are the social suplex MVP. <laughs> or, or, would, or would Jeremy frown upon that uh, upon such a distinction? Like, I don't know. Look, this is my damn site. What you mean? He's the MVP. <laughs> you see, uh, Jeremy was on all the shows last week, so make sure you guys check all those shows out. So uh, Jeremy was running up the, n- the nimbus, as they say. <laughs> it's gonna be so funny if these dudes actually come down to Tampa. I'm telling for next, WrestleMania next year, and they'd be like, "Yeah, you know, Jeremy." James, Rich, and then like they gonna be some uh, some of some of Tampa and St. Pete, and they be like, uh, how did y'all end up like this? <laughs> <laughs> when they hear they start hearing about numbers instead of numbers, and, and oh, wait, oh, I can't wait till I play like a a, a, a classic juke me, uh, medley of all the songs from like of a two of two hours long length. Of all the classic junk songs over the last, you know, oh my god, my, my lifetime. Can't wait. Yes. Yep. Maybe have the shows from Jam Pony too. Who knows? Yeah, and there's nothing more fun than Jam Pony. If you don't know what it is, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that'll end the show. Thanks for listening. Later. Peace. <laughs>